It is said that companies thrive in a tranquil, constant environment. It is also said that the only constant is change. We believe that to make success sustainable, an organization must move with the current and have the ability to adapt. Organizations must be able to evolve. To cope with challenging environments, man has had to organize himself since the beginning of time. People formed close-knit communities, built around family relations and the rules of survival. A tribe depended on a powerful chief who enforced strict loyalty and ruled through strength and fear. Nowadays, we sometimes find tribal communities within a company. Formed by small teams and driven by strong dualistic belief in we versus them, they ignore or fight the outside world. They are focused on their way of doing things. And as their relationships are emotional rather than functional, they are not scalable. In a changing environment, they rarely last. Well, okay, but still. Our story starts with the rise of early civilizations. Agriculture improved men's perception of the past, present and future. And through complex planning and bureaucracy, it became possible to carry out bigger projects and effectively organize large campaigns. Tribal ways became code of law, and authority was now based on a system of rules. People gathered around national symbols, and in so doing, entered a collective we stage. Power became institutionalized. In this world, there was only one right way to do things. The divine ruler governed by the book. In these organizations, planning and execution are separated by rigid social stratification. And it's imperative that everyone knows their place in a highly hierarchical structure. And change is a threat. For thousands of years, all over the world, feudal systems have suppressed rebellion and revolt. And then, in Western Europe, in a blink of history's eye, it all fell apart. Although today there are still many bureaucratic organizations with a strong hierarchy, a new paradigm, powered by the industrial revolution and the wealth of the middle classes, had given birth to the efficiency-based organization. Theorized by Fail in his Workplace Scientific Organization and implemented by Ford, companies were viewed as machines to be optimized. Humans were considered resources, as replaceable as a cog, even the names of mental afflictions caused by exhaustion and anxiety were based on mechanics. People were tense, under pressure and stressed. Workplace scientific organization led to new theories. After Maslow and McGregor, Mintzberg and Drucker became the fathers of modern management, which focuses on strong transactional organizations. With an emphasis on entrepreneurship and accountability only for results, these organizations are often found to be cold or heartless. And in the 1960s, the term human capital was coined. Rather than focusing on the mechanics of labor, human capital encapsulates all aspects of human productivity, including creativity, well-being and motivation. A workforce is something to invest in, and organizations can be designed to intensify collaboration, accountability and cooperation. The so-called excellent organizations of the 80s were built around shared values and a strong corporate culture. And then, of course, came this. Hello, I'm Bill Gates, chairman of Microsoft. In this video, you're going to see the future. Not only did Silicon Valley companies create a connected world, they also reinvented the workplace breaking down barriers between teams, projects and geographies. They attracted people, millennials especially, 
by allowing them not only to play, but also to bring their personal values to work, giving them the opportunity to have a positive global impact. Leading contemporary thinkers like Rifkin, Sinek, Lalu and McGrath claim that overall in the 21st century, the currency will become more emotional, ethical, spiritual. They all agree that organizations should no longer offer a place where people need to work, but rather create an environment people want to belong to. In this connected world, more and more companies try to create a holistic organization, where innovation is no longer owned by a single research and development department, but is based on an ecosystem, including employees, customers, partners, and even competitors. But by merely copying the frontrunners of this new era, we end up disregarding the whole evolutionary process. We really don't know what is coming next. We just know it is coming. The future organization as we see it is not a stable construct designed to meet its own needs. It's not a power structure, a machine, a community, not even a system of networks. It is a river. And it's not the river that carves the landscape. It's the water it carries drawn from its own environment. It is water that forms the riverbank and irrigates the soil. The river itself is fluid, not a constant thing, but rather motion, shaped by its surroundings. Water, river and landscape combine in perpetual flux. They are constantly affecting each other. So, what we can learn from contemporary views on organization is that change is maybe no longer the only constant factor. There's also connectivity. The way we manage change and transformation in an organization will affect our style of leadership. It will influence the corporate culture and the way we work together. And it will have significant impact on our relations with our customers to share these views with you is why we are here.